Chris Russell, Republican strategist, and Leroy Jones, State Democratic Committee Chairman. Gents, always good to see you both. Chairman, let me start with you. Polls out this week from Monmouth are pretty good for the governor. He's over 50 percent. But President Biden, 50 percent disapproval in blue New Jersey. We're going to talk about the midterms more in a minute, but do the president's poll numbers concern the party as election season begins? Well, you know, there, there's always going to be concerned. Uh, you know, we have a long way to go until, uh, you know, until the next presidential ele- election. A lot can happen between now and then. Uh, you know, it is, uh, you know, concerning. And, uh, you know, and uh, we are, you know, going to, uh, you know, be, you know, closely monitoring, uh, you know, that kind of, uh, you know, polling activity, uh, you know, as well as, uh, you know, taking a closer look into uh, some focus group activity as well. So, um, you know, so yes, but we have a long, you know, we got a, we got a long runway, you know, between now and the next presidential. Chris, you guys are walking around with some strut nowadays, but you're not going to fall for the numbers in a mammoth poll, are you? <laughs> Touche. Um, no, listen, I, I, the other number that you didn't mention there, David, is that, you know, with independence, the president's up to, upside down by 17 points in that new Monmouth poll. So, you know, not to take a shot at my friend Pat Murray, but judging by last year, it might be worse than that. So we feel pretty good about where things are today. We understand it's a long time. Like the chairman said, the election is not tomorrow. In some ways, I wish it were because uh, you don't know whether this is a boil or a simmer. But, but we feel good about the trajectory. We think the country is going to be looking for a check and balance on, on Biden and the Democrats. And, and for the numbers to be that bad here in New Jersey, that tells you nationally this is going to be a real rough year for Democrats. Yeah, there were two Monmouth polls out this week. The, uh, the one on Murphy has him over 50 percent now. You had him on the ropes, but you let him get away, no? Unfortunately, the campaign ends, you know. So, we, we, you know, Jack not out there be able to make the case every day. Certainly, uh, there's been a bounce back for the governor. But listen, he's off the ballot now. You know, his numbers don't matter that much. Certainly, they're not going to help these congressional candidates down ballot. They're not going to help these county uh, officials down ballot. This is a federal election year. Uh, there's, a, there's a national wave building against Democrats. And I think we saw that coming to New Jersey last year. Uh, and this year, we have some congressional seats that we think we can win back. Chairman, is the governor uh, a liability going around the state with... Uh... The congressional candidates, or is he a plus? I didn't. I didn't hear Chris say that. Uh, you know, and uh, you know, look, you know, they, you know, the, the uh, Chris and his party has a little bit of swag now. You know, coming off the uh, November elections, uh, you know, we'll give that to him. I mean, and, you know, you earned that. Uh, you know, but no, I I think the governor, uh, you know, has uh, you know those coattails that are going to be important to. New Jersey, and particularly in a congressional, uh, you know, election. Look, this is New Jersey, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, these are individuals that are, you know, uh, you know, vetted in New Jersey in terms of, uh, you know, their, uh, you know, their representation, the people that they represent, the people that they're going to talk to, the messaging that they, uh, you know, wrap themselves around. And, uh, you know, the governor's going to be, uh, you know, out front on that. Uh, you know, yeah, this is his last term as governor, but, uh, you know, look, he's not going away. Uh, you know, he's going to be, uh, you know, a major part of what, uh, you know, New Jersey looks like going forward. And, uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, as we look through these next congressional elections, uh, you know, he's going to loom large in this as well as, uh, you know, many other, um, you know, surrogates up and down the, uh, you know, up and down the state. On the Let me stay with, with you here, Chairman. You want an early presidential primary for New Jersey and even some Republicans, I think, agreed with you. What's the prospect of the legislature moving a bill to change the date of the presidential primary? I mean, I think the legislature, uh, you know, could move with, uh, you know, with all alacrity to do that. Uh, you know, from uh, a party standpoint, uh, you know, we want to make sure that it's sanctioned by the uh, Democratic National Committee. Uh, you know, you don't want to have, uh, you know, a, a situation where, you know, you have two entities, uh, you know, just, you know, walking two different paths. So, you know, we're going to make that case, uh, you know, to the, uh, to the DNC. And, uh, you know, I think the legislature will, uh, you know, will roll, you know, in, uh, in lockstep if that decision is, uh, you know, one that embraces, you know, what my request has been in terms of an earlier primary for New Jersey. Chris, most Republicans I talk to about moving the primary say, meh, what do you say? Oh, listen, I, I can't speak for the party the way Leroy can, obviously, for his party a bit. But from my personal opinion, I'd love to see an earlier primary. I think it'd be good for New Jersey to get more action and more engagement by voters in that process and, and to have more of a, uh, a say really in what happens in the in the primary. Right now, as, as Leroy knows, I mean, we're at the tail end of this thing. It's almost a done deal by the time it gets here. Very rarely does it make it to us. So 
from a personal opinion standpoint, bring it on. I'd love it. You know, part of the argument, of course, is that on the Democratic side, New Jersey is much more representative of the country, diversity and all of and all of that in both uh, economics and eth ethnicity and race is the Republican Party of New Jersey uh, representative of the Republican Party across the country now. Well, listen, I mean, you look back and I'd argue that New Jersey is not necessarily representative of the country. You know, President Biden won New Jersey by 16 points in 2020. He didn't win the country by 16 points. Right. So New Jersey's far to the left. They're far bluer than the, the country as a whole. Uh, and, and I think the Republicans in New Jersey would be a, a, a excellent to have this way in of, of what kind of Republican candidate we think can win nationally and, and can push an agenda that you know, as a common sense conservative agenda, similar to, you know, what Jack did here last year. It's a, a, a we, we can only grow the party if we can have more of a say in who our nominee would be. Hmm. Yeah, you know, All right. you know, David, right. I think, you know, Chris makes a good point. And, uh, you know, look, you know, Chris, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, some of the more forward thinking people in his party, uh, you know, move away from, uh, you know, some of the, the national, you know, rancor that we see, uh, you know, on the Republican side. And, uh, you know, you know, they, you know, they're more, you know, uh, you know, to a centrist kind of, uh, you know, position that, uh, you know, has always been the case here in New Jersey. Conservatism doesn't, uh, you know, really, uh, you know, it's not the order of the day. So, uh, you know, as we move forward, uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad to know that, uh, you know, still in New Jersey, both political parties have a mindset that is embracive of, you know, what is all good about this country. All right. Speaking of primaries, the congressional primaries are set. Chairman, who's the weakest link on the Republican side, the candidate they don't want to see on the ballot? Look, you know, there's, you know, there's candidates up and down the ballot. Uh, you know, we, we believe that, uh, you know, we have, uh, you know, premier candidates, uh, you know, uh, you know, in every, you know, in every congressional district. Uh, you know, I'm not going to necessarily size up, you know, who the weakest is, uh, you know, on the opposing side. You know, our job is to make sure that we get our messaging out. Uh, you know, and, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, certainly the message is going to be recalibrated from, uh, you know, the, the uh, no November election. But, uh, you know, we're going to be competitive in every one of the congressional districts, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, we're not going to, you know, we're not looking to take any prisoners. Uh, you know, we're going to move with all alacrity to, you know, to run robust campaigns in every one of those legislative districts. And we're looking for the outcomes that will, you know, a nor benefit to the Democratic Party and the Democratic majority. Yeah, let's see if we can't get Chris to name some names. Chris, uh, this is your party's moment. I'm happy. Besides, to, I'm besides, happy to name some names. I know what the names are going to be. <laughs> that doesn't matter. Well, listen, go ahead, Chris. Let me set it up for you, Chris. Besides Congressman Malinowski, who I know you all think will lose to Tom Kane Jr., yeah. besides him, who else are Republicans likely to pick off from the incumbents on the Democratic side? Listen, I believe, I truly believe this, that, that, that I think uh, Andy Kim, Mikey Sherrill, and Josh Gottheimer are all vulnerable uh, in, in a huge wave. Even someone like Frank Pallone is, is potentially in the mix. I understand these are difficult districts. The Democrats did a, a wonderful gerrymander of the congressional map a few months back and, and made these districts less competitive, but not in a year like this, because the, the, the key is Andy Kim knows this, Gottheimer, Sherrill, Joe Biden is on the ballot, and we just talked about his numbers. They're going to carry him around their neck like a mill around their neck that's going to drag him down. Republican candidates are going to run campaigns in every one of these districts saying we're going to be a check and balance on the, on the policies and from inflation to kind of the, some of the more radical social policy. Uh, we're going to be check and balancing and reach to the mainstream, the middle. Uh, our base is already fired up enough. We're going to reach back to the middle. and We're going to get independents and Democrats to come our way, too, and we're going to win back some of these seats. Chairman, he says, Cheryl, Kim, and Pallone, all vulnerable. You agree with that? And Gottheimer. <laughs> and Gottheimer, sorry. And Gottheimer. <laughs> no, I <laughs> agree with you. <laughs> I don't, hey, look, you know, Chris, uh, you know, deserves, the, you know, the swag. He deserves the ability to, you know, to try to, you know, prognosticate, uh, you know, what these uh, elections are going to be, as I do as well. Look, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be uh, a fight in every legislative district. Uh, you know, we don't look for, uh, you know, we don't look for free rides. We don't look for non-competitive, you know, races. You know, we don't look at candidates and, and measure them, you know, based on, you know, vulnerabilities or anything like that. You know, we're going to be competitive in every legislative and every com uh, congressional district. And, uh, you know, uh, Chris mentioned, uh, you know, Malinowski being most vulnerable. I think that you know, we're going to be, uh, you know, surprised in that particular district. Uh, you know, Tom is going to run hard. Uh, you know, I'm talking about Tom Malinowski, 
And, um, you know, and, uh, you know, I think that, uh, you know, as we get closer to, uh, you know, November, you know, there's going to be, uh, you know, uh, a different, uh, you know, flavor in, uh, you know, in, in the, in the air. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, that seventh district is going to surprise a lot of people. I, I right, got to stick dinner on that one with you, Leroy. Let me know if you want to take me up on that. Tom King. Right, you, you, you pick, you pick, right the, here, folks. pick the restaurant, pick the restaurant, Chris. You know, I got a good appetite, man. And a, you know, sometimes <laughs> pretty on it. Listen, and, and, and gentlemen, I, I'll, I'll be there just to moderate. And, you know, if I get a steak out of it too, who, you know, we're all better off for it. All hey, right, Chris Russell. Chris take care of us all. <laughs> Chris Russell, Leroy Jones. Good to see you both. Thanks okay. for coming on, man. See all right, great seeing you, Chris. You too, Leroy.